The power of owning multifamily properties. There's three awesome, powerful concepts that multifamily properties allow us to have. And number one is tax benefits. Number two is control. And number three is leverage. So the tax benefits, right? The tax benefits, this is one of only the only asset that the IRS will allow you to use depreciation. It, basically, depreciation gives investors a free pass. So you can be receiving cash flow all year long, right? You get cash flow after month one, get cash flow after month two, get cash flow after month three, get cash flow every month long, right? And then at the end of the year, you get to depreciate your asset. Now, what is depreciation? Depreciation is a non-cash cost. It's a non-cash expense that you, that you get to apply against your income, which therefore allows you to pay less tax because you're, not, you're showing a less of an income, right? So this is meant to represent the periodic allocation of the asset wearing out. But real, real estate, if it's done properly and if it's managed properly, actually appreciates in value. So therefore you get this powerful leverage of depreciating an appreciating asset. And when you're depreciating an appreciating asset, you're also getting cash flow and getting to shield that cash flow on an annual basis. So you're receiving cash flow and it's getting shielded by the depreciation. So you're def basically deferring paying tax. And as you defer to pay tax, your money can now grow faster for you. So here's a K1, right? That, we, that uh, one of our investors got. And you can see here, there is distributions of $31,500. Then you can see up here under, under number two, this was a, a net loss that this person had. So they received $31,500 all year long. And the property still showed a loss of $42,000. Therefore, this $31,000 was received tax-free in the year of 2019. They got to defer paying tax on that, right? Which is extremely powerful. Then, you know, like with, with typically multifamily real estate, it's depreciated over 27 and a half years because it's considered residential real estate. Commercial real estate, which is like your office buildings and your hotels and your retail, that's depreciated over 39 years. Another benefit with multifamily real estate is that a lot, you can now do like accelerated depreciation. And what is accelerated depreciation? Accelerated depreciation allows you to take that 27 and a half years and compress it. So now you get to depreciate assets much, you depreciate your asset much quicker. Like for example, you get to break apart all the incremental elements of, a, of an apartment. Like you get to break apart all of the, the walls in, in your apartment. You get to break apart the floors, the cabinets, the kitchen, all the elements of the kitchen all get broken down. You get to break down, break down the roof. And each one of those items has a different, um, a different year, uh, quantity of years that it can be depreciated over. So your roof, are going to be depreciated over a longer time period than, than your carpet or your flooring, right? So your carpet or your flooring is going to get depreciated over five years. So all of a sudden you took that 27 and a half years and you compressed that to five years. Now you're getting a bigger depreciation early in the investment while you're receiving cash flow, shielding your income. And then costs within a property can also be segregated between real property and personal property. You know, personal property has a shorter depreciation, like we were saying between five, seven, and 15 years in comparison to 27 and a half years, All right? So you're getting to compress those time frames in the depreciation, getting to shield more of your income. Brian, is there anything else you want to add on this? So it's like, like I think of it as, uh, okay, so, say you had like a, a job, right? And you, you worked a full year, right? You got your, your income. 
Um, you, you got your monthly paychecks, right? This is almost like you've got a negative offset to that. So you're not paying any income taxes at the end of the year. In fact, you're paying zero taxes. And just think about how much faster your money would grow if you're paying no taxes on your income. You can just take all that extra profit and continue compounding it. That's kind of the idea here is you're, you're taking money in, but you're not paying any tax on that money. And it can just compound that much faster. Right, well, if you reinvest it, right? And then you just compound it. And now all of a sudden you got this huge ball of, of capital that's moving forward for you because you didn't have to pay half of it in taxes. So another benefit real estate investors get is we can do 1031 like kind exchanges. So according to the tax law, you know, 1031 um, like kind exchanges allow you to literally sell a property and roll the entire gain of that property into another property. So you have to take, like if you sell a property for a million dollars, now you have to go and buy another property, a like kind property, right? And take that entire million dollars and invest it in another property. And you pay zero taxes on that transaction. You pay zero taxes, which allows you to compound your investment over a lifetime, right? And, and that is, um, and then the proceeds from the sale are rolled into the, into the purchase of the second property. Um, and you can do this indefinitely. You know, this can be done from pr property number one to property number two to property number three to property number four, right? And then now your kids are inheriting this huge nest egg because you invested in real estate. Because you invested in real estate and, and did like kind of 1031 like kind exchanges. Yeah, I love 1031 exchanges. Imagine you bought this property up top here and you know, you got it at a good price. You renovated it. You, you grew the NOI and you know, five years later you came out with, with, with a value of double what you initially you know, put in. Now you're selling this and, and doing a 1031 exchange. You're paying zero taxes on that, that massive windfall that's coming in when you sell the property. And now you can take that and roll it into a much bigger property. Uh, it's, it's just awesome. The, the power of this is amazing. Yeah. No, I, I've seen a lot of like the newer investors that, you know, they bought a bunch of like scrappy properties, right? And then, you know, that now they're looking to upgrade to a, a, a much um, cleaner asset, right? A bigger asset, a bigger property, right? And what they'll do is they'll sell all of their single families and their, you know, the duplexes and they'll roll that into a, a bigger property and do a 1031 like kind. So they don't have to pay any taxes on the gain that they got. And some of those cases, you know, they had massive, you know, capital gains. They got, you know, the, the properties appreciated in value tremendously. Right. So control, you get tremendous control with multifamily properties. Well, number one, you know, like as an owner and operator of a multifamily property, like you get to determine, like if you increase the rents, you get to determine if you're going to decrease like expenses, right? So, like you, you have control over um, like the vendors that you're going to bring to the site. So like specifically during COVID, right? We had 152 unit property. And when, when COVID hit, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know the government was going to come through and provide PPP loans to all, you know, all these businesses, right? And, and provide, you know, unemployment benefits that were more than what some people were making going to a full-time job. So we didn't know what was going to happen. So we cut off all CapEx expenses. We totally stopped all CapEx expenses to hold that money in reserves in case we needed it um, to keep the property moving forward. Because at the end of the day, we, we have to, you know, make sure our obligations, like the mortgage is being paid. Um, and then the essentials at the property. And to be 100% honest with you, a lot of the tenants didn't want people and the maintenance guys going through their units. So they were, they, you know, the, the maintenance um, calls were, were, were only being addressed if they were on an emergency basis, right? From a control standpoint, you get to determine what, when and what units you're going to renovate. Um, you know, you get the, the freedom to be innovative. Like you can change things. You can be, this is where you get to be creative, right? You get to, um, you get to, you know, convert a, um, an old, an old, um, an old tennis court to a, a, an amazing playground for, for, for the kids in the community. Right. So you get to be creative with the asset. You can, 
You can you change things around. And then when is the last time a stock investment allowed you to like have any real say in the company, right? You don't have any say in the company. Never. You trust the management teams. It's uh, you, you got no control. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the leverage of non-recourse loans. So let's look at a couple of examples here, right? So um, wh where else can you control a premium asset like, like a multifamily apartment and only put down 20% of the asset's total cost, right? You know, leverage is, is a very powerful use of other people's money. Um, you get to borrow, you know, four fifths of an asset's value and, and really increase your potential re return that, that you can generate, you know, just based off of putting in less of your own money at, at the end of the day. Um, one thing to mention, la leverage will magnify both returns and losses, right? So um, always, always important to make sure you're, you're, you're looking at a good property, right? But, um, you know, provided that's the case, you know, leverage will, will allow you to get a much better return. So here's, here's two examples right here. On the left-hand side, you've got a, a property you just bought 100% cash, right? And on the right hand side, you've got a, uh, a mortgage at 80% LTV, which is loan to value. Uh, and what that means is 80% of the property value is covered by the mortgage and that leaves 20% uh, as actual equity investment, right? So you put down 20% and the bank is covering the, the rest. So how is that for other people's money, right? You've got 20% of your money in and the bank is covering everything else. So that, that's, that's pretty good. Um, so what does that mean, right? So you're, you're one, two, three, four, and, and, and five, um, you're generating cash flow on this property. In the, in the situation where you bought the property 100% out, you would have uh, put down $100,000 of your own money. Um, because you, you didn't take a mortgage, you're getting a little bit more cash flow, actually a lot more cash flow um, in the actual years. And then you're getting 100% of the value when the property sells for 157,000. Now, on the flip side, right, your, your investment for when you're using a mortgage is only $20,000. So it's so much less than, than what you had to do when you paid all cash. Um, because you're paying the mortgage each month, you're paying 6,400 bucks to the mortgage. You're only pocketing $600, okay. Um, it's still, it's still uh, you know, you're still getting cash flow positive every, every year. And then by the time you go to year five and you sell, you collect $70,000. So on a percentage return basis, right? Your internal rate of return over the five year period for just the investment you know, with cash was 14 and a half percent. If you're using leverage on this, you're averaging 30.4% per year. Your $20,000 has, has more than doubled. It's gone up 265%. And if you had just used cash, you'd only be up 85% by the time you got to the end. So you can see the, the difference here, right? And, and, and the, real, the real kicker is, right, you know, you don't have to that. If you've got $100,000 to invest, you can invest all 100 at leverage, right? You don't have to only do, you know, one fifth of that, right? You can put 100 in and then, then, you're, then your 100 grows that much faster. So that's, right. that's the power of leverage. Right. And this is like this example right here is why real estate investors are so wealthy and why they do make so much money is that they do, they can use leverage. Like you can't do this with stocks. Like you can do it with stocks on a, on a very small basis. Like they'll, you know, the, the brokerage houses allow you to, you know, you know, maybe get like a three to one ratio. Right. But with, with real estate, you're getting a, a, a two to 10 ratio. Like you're, you get to leverage up way more with real estate. Right. Like, look at that. Like if you bought one stock, right, without any leverage, which most people can't even get access to leverage. If you bought one stock, that's this is invest. That's like the hundred thousand dollar investment on the left. Right. Whereas with real estate, you can use a mortgage and debt, right. To magnify your returns. So you put $20,000 down in the beginning. And at the end, you made 70,000. That's a 265% return. Whereas on the other side, you, you put a hundred thousand down, right? And you, you made 157,000 plus the 7,000 cash flow all year long, which only, which is a good return. It's not a bad return, right? But it's it, at the end of the day, in comparison to the, 
the the one where you use debt, I mean, 85% return in comparison to a 265% return. That's the difference between people retiring and people not retiring. Then non-recourse loans, right? So um, we like using leverage, but you know what what happens in a worst case scenario, right? So so what non-recourse really means is that the loan is actually secured by the collateral, right? And the collateral in this case is going to be the property. So um, if the if you actually default as the borrower, the bank can only come back and collect the collateral. They can't go back after your personal assets. Uh, they, they can't go back after your family's assets. They can only come back after that property, right? And, you know, there, there are certain exceptions in the case of fraud, right? So you have to mention that. It's not, if you actually go and defraud the bank, um, you know, they can't actually come after you legally. But, you know, provided that's not the case, this, this provides really good protection, um, even in the worst case scenario. Now, we're not saying, you know, go ahead and, and take risks, right? But this is, this is just a good safety net to have, um, on, on all the properties, right? You can make you feel a little bit better about taking out, you know, a leveraged instrument on a property if you yeah, know like, that it's, it's protected. Yeah, like when, the, when you're taking out a $20 million loan or, a, you know, a $50 million loan or a $15 million loan, right? Or even, even as low as a, a $2 million loan. Uh, you know, it's a non-recourse loan. So they're not coming after your personal access, assets like Brian was saying, right? So that's like, that's, that's, that's really powerful because that just shows you how much the bank actually believes in that asset. Because you try to go get a loan for anything else. Like the bank wants everything to be secured. They want to tie, they pretty much want your firstborn. They tie everything up. They want all your, they want to understand all of your, they, they attach all your assets. This is really powerful. And that's something we'll get into later on, guys. I mean, when you guys are going to the banks to get funding, the banks are having their own teams run the underwriting on this property, just like you are. So if they can't come to, you know, the, the, same, the same solution that you do, if they don't think this is a good deal, they're not going to lend you money. The fact that they're going to lend you money on this deal means that they believe in this deal just as much as you do. And they're willing to do it as a non-recourse loan because they know they can always come back and collect that property at the end of the day. If, if things go south and they like the property. So, right. Uh, exactly. Just no confidence. Exactly. So the combination of those three powerful steps, the tax benefits, control and leverage is used to maximize the investment results to secure your freedom and your future. <laughs>